Well, hey guys, this is Daniel Alexander Cannon here on the Supernatural Show once again. I'm here with my co-host Shannon. Hello. And um, we've got a really cool show for you today. One of y'all guys sent us in a uh, story, a supernatural story, which y'all guys can submit your own stories to be told here on the show as well. Uh, Anytime you want to, all you got to do is go to the website. But the story in general is about some people who live in the woods that most people think are a fantasy. And not just the woods, but they prefer the woods, um, the wilderness. And they are supernatural. They're not just 3D beings like us here on this plane. They have the ability to exist in, I believe, at least two different dimensions. Uh, and I know that sounds wild, but this is the Supernatural Show. And so if you've had something unique happen to you or an experience in your life and it falls into the category of supernatural and true, we want to hear about it. And I will tell the story or Shannon will tell the story because Shannon's going to start reading some stories soon. But today I'm going to read it. And we also right up front here, um, I've got a video I imagine uh, quite a few of y'all guys have seen before that I'm going to show here in just a second. But before that, I'm going to check in with Shannon. I think she's got a couple of things going on. And I also wanted to tell you guys, most of you know that I have moved into a, uh, a new little place where we're at and uh, very cozy. We like it here. And um, But this location where I'm at, where I had my experiences with the Sabe, the woods people, was here about five years or so ago, but we moved away from here. Now we're back, not in the same house, but right next door, and there's all this swamping woods out here back behind us. And I had some experiences there, which I'll tell here during the show as well. And also I had some angels visit us the other night and I'm going to try to remember to tell that to you here in just a minute. But let's see what Miss Shannon is doing. She's still barking like a dog. <laughs> oh, you know, rocking. It happens. Um, hi, guys. Uh, first off, sorry for our absence. Both of us ended up, you know, in the realm of getting our houses in order. Uh, I thought I was going to have time to catch up on some work for the website and everything. And God said, nope, you need to get your house in order. So I've been really trying to work on that. And um, you'll have to excuse me, guys. I I'm a little shaken. I I'm a bit on the emotional side. I've been having dreams every single night that are uh, reminders and reminiscent of the visions I had in 2013 and it, it the parallels have just been slapping me in the face and especially last night I I had a dream of the Antichrist and it just brought me right back into all the visions that I had had I'm not really going to go into detail about it but it it's uh it shook me up pretty good and I just uh, want to say, you guys, I really think we're going home soon. And uh, that's just all I have to say about that. And other, other than that, though, things have been doing fairly good. Again, I'm getting my house in order. Daniel's getting his house in order. And praise yeah. Jesus for that. Yeah, it reminds me, Shannon, of uh, talking about getting your house in order. You know, we live in many houses. We don't just exist in a physical house like with walls around us like I'm sitting here in right now, which I'm so grateful and thankful to now have a place where I'm going to be able to uh, stay and be happy. And, and uh, But our houses, we live in our bodies, which is our house. We live in our house, which is our house. And we live in this world, which is our house. We live in multiple houses, and so getting your house in order has to do with your physical body, trying to do things better, make better choices. Like I'm working, huh? 
your family too. Family. Sometimes, even whether you're a man or a woman, sometimes you're forced in life to walk with a rod of iron in your hand. Now that don't mean go around whacking people with it because we're talking about the symbolism of a rod of iron in your hand. But you have to be in charge and, and make sure that the right decisions are being made for your family and for your house and for yourself and for the bigger house, which is our house that we live in, that our father created for us. This world, W-H-I-R-L-E-D, that's the correct spelling of world. It's not W-O-R-L-D, that's a deceptive word. We live in the eye of the world, God's eye. And so, let's see, let me, uh, let me, uh, go, let's go ahead and watch this video and then we'll come back to my stories. And uh, this is a video, I think some of you have probably seen it, but it's pretty fascinating. And of course, anyone can look at it and say, oh, that's fake, that's this, that's that. But even if it is, even if it is fake, which I don't believe it is, but even if it is, the fact is, is that these creatures, these people, because they are a type of people, they're just different than us and they're multidimensional. They're supernatural. They do exist. I've had experiences right here where I'm at now, not this exact spot, this location within 100 yards of here. Um, we've heard them howl at nighttime, nothing like anything you've ever heard until you hear one of these big males go for it one time. They are incredibly powerful, and the sound of them lets you know it. But we'll come back to that story. Let's take a look at this video. So here, let me pull it up on stage. And let's uh, let's go full screen with it so people can see better, Shannon. Okay, let me tell you what's going on here first. Okay, this is a man. He's out hog hunting. He's um sneaking through the woods stealthy he's got his his rifle or a shotgun and he's camoed out and he's sneaking through the woods and he's got his camera and all of a sudden he comes up upon something in the swamp there at the at the bottom of a tree that you can see there's a creature sitting in front of the tree reaching inside of the tree and pulling out bark and eating the grubs and stuff off of it. And well, that's the setup, so let's keep going.
Okay. And that's, that is, that is, yeah, that's all of it. Okay. All right. So there you have the, all right. That's rude to be ringing while I'm doing a live show. Well, you know, it's interesting. I don't know if any of our viewers have done any research on like a lot of the missing people cases in um, the national parks and things along those lines. And some of the children who have actually been recovered and found many, many miles away from where they were originally um, lost. A lot of them depict a, a hairy beast type creature that helped to protect them during their time. And, you know, children, they don't really know how to lie like we do. I mean, they, they do and to get themselves out of trouble, but when they're saying these things, they're quite honest about what they're, what they experienced and what they've seen. And there's many accounts of children being protected and taken up under the wing of a hairy type creature. Yeah, like and the bear saved me, mama. Right. Yeah, that kind of thing. And yeah, and there's, there's, there's of course stories that can go on both sides of good and bad. And I would say that's the same for human beings. And these creatures are at least probably half human being at least I think, based on the DNA, which has been gotten and done many, many times, there's a, there's a, there's a guy out there that's done this work, and he's gotten the DNA, and it's half human and half unknown, and no other match, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, there's a guy's channel that's called How to Hunt. His name is Steve, and he he mainly focuses on on uh, uh, stories that are related around these beings, and he's got thousands of stories. He does a video every day where he just reads an email that's, or, or a couple of emails. But it's, you know, uh, this is the Supernatural show, so this kind of content fits. But me personally, I'm just absolutely fascinated with the Supernatural, and that's why I chose this part of why I chose to move into this genre of doing a show as well as continuing my other work. But uh, because, so we can talk about these things because we need to learn what the truth behind all of these things are. Um, just a quick interlude. Don't mean to interrupt, but I just wanted to give a shout out to Abby Oz. Thank you so much for your super chat. Every little penny counts and I'm sure that's going to help Daniel get a little extra for his house and praise Jesus. Thank you. Just wanted to shout out to you. That Thank was you. amazing. I greatly appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Um, yeah, we're still trying to grow the show and, and ultimately it'll be helping Miss Shannon too. And it already does a little bit, but it's really going to help more. And all of her links are down below too as well with the uh with her uh venmo and paypal and that kind of stuff so you know guys are welcome to show her some love and appreciation too because uh you do pay man as that's for sure it's pennies literally at this point but you know, uh bringing this bringing this information and sharing is payment enough for me but any little extra is absolutely I just have so much gratitude for all of you who give us love and support. So but anyways, please continue with your story. I just wanted to make sure I didn't forget to shout out to Abby there. Well, speaking of stories, we're going to be going to the story that was sent in by a, a young lady. The start, story starts off when she was like three or five years old. I haven't read the whole thing because I wanted to hold back and get my full reaction, but I read about a third of them like, oh boy, we got to tell the story. And so, yeah, we're going to do that here in just a minute. But what story was I talking about, Shannon? What was I saying? <laughs> You're talking about, well, the Sabe. I, I, sorry, I interrupted right as you were. Well, I mentioned that I, I'm at a new a location very just next door where I was about five years ago. And I know I wanted to tell this and then we're going to get onto the story. 
But, uh, what's in? Oh, you were talking about a gentleman who uploads videos every day. Oh, Steve, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Steve. <laughs> and then we'll tell my story. Steve, um, and there's a number of very credible guys out there. This guy, Steve, he lives up in Canada on Vancouver Island. And as a young man, he started having experiences with these things. He had a recently he had an experience where he had a knife, like a big Bowie kind of knife. And he had, yes, Shannon. Oh, I was like, I saw that. I know who you're talking about. Okay, sorry. You do? <laughs> Got excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he had a big Bowie knife. And yeah, it's called the How to Hunt channel. He's on YouTube. And uh, he, he's worked very hard and got a good following going. But he had a knife that he had lost in the woods. Okay. One time before he had a, an arrow that he lost in the woods and it got returned to him. Well, this time he had this big Bowie knife and he had lost it, I think he said, like in the spring of the previous year or something like that. You can go in there and tell the story. It's only about oh, two weeks back you could find it, something that happened to him. But he lost this knife, and then here he is six, nine months later out in the woods again recently just doing his videos and stuff that he does. But he's a he's a guide, an outdoorsman. He's, this dude is a legit woods dude. And... I'll spare telling the whole story, but basically, he he was he had a backpack with him, and he set the backpack down and walked away just in the edge of the woods, and come back getting set up for to film a video talking about reading a story that somebody emailed him, and he goes in his backpack, and his knife is in his backpack that had gone missing, and his backpack he had done emptied it out and filled it back up multiple times, and he said. I would never carry this knife in my backpack without a sheath because you, you're asking to cut yourself up. But, but it was in there without a sheath. And these beans, they put it in his backpack. They found it in the woods. They knew who it belongs to. They have supernatural observation skills. They'll be there. And in many of his videos, they're there. They're actually there. And they're watching him film his videos. Sometimes they'll throw sticks or rocks and they do other supernatural things. And yeah, you can say, oh, he just faked that. Well, I have taken some of his footage down and put it in an editor and looked at it to see what's going on. And there's some really wicked, weird stuff going on in those videos. I say wicked, I don't mean evil. Just really strange stuff that just happens to this dude. And he's not a computer geek dude like I kind of am. He knows how to record a video and get it uploaded and he's just learned how to go live this dude ain't in there editing videos faking stuff i can tell you he's not doing it but he got his knife back and he was like he was blown away with it but they brought a knife back and put it back in his thing and they had done a similar thing previously i think it was with an arrow or something that he had lost but they they brought that back to him too that was a couple of years back though Anyways, now I'm here at the location and I'm probably going to do some filming and recording audio because I'm back at the location where about four or five years ago, I would sit out on the front porch and listen at nighttime. And at first I wasn't sitting out there listening. I was out there just working on my laptop because I've been doing YouTube for about 12 years now. And I was out there working. It was 3 a.m. and I start hearing something in the woods. And it was like a drumming, boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, what in the world is that? And I never could for sure know what it was. But my intuition, my awareness that I get from having this long nerve endings, which that's what your hair is, it's, it's, it, it connects you with your environment. Women call it mother's intuition. And why do you think they've talked all the men into cutting their hair? Do you think God expected us to keep our hair short? No, again. Our hair, our nerve endings that connect you with your environment and your world. If you don't believe it, get one hair and you go and see if it ain't got a nerve connected to it. Well, it's not just fur. What are you going to say, Shannon? I was going to say and read about Samson in the Bible. Mm -hmm. 
with strength yeah. and godliness yeah. was a gift in his hair. And uh, yeah. I feel the same way. I, I literally feel powerful with my hair. My beard too, same thing. You know? I feel godly power with it on me. It and people can feel it and see it in me when they're I'm in the public. They're like, I get I get respect. Not in a ego way. I get respect in a I don't know, it's hard to explain. But when people see me, they're like, oh, like I don't know, it's just strange. But anyways, so I'm back at this location. I'm hearing that drumming at nighttime. And my intuition was telling me that these are these beings that I'd heard about many times. They're in the woods here. But I thought, there's, I couldn't prove it. I didn't know it for sure, you know. But I was hearing these th thing every night, almost every night. And then one night, and that was normally at 3 a.m., but one night we come home at, mid at midnight. Right at midnight, we walk up on the front porch. And before we could reach and touch the door, I hear, no. but much longer, much deeper, and much more powerful than I could ever come close to. And it did it three times. And me and my girlfriend were standing there like, did you hear that? I mean, it was just the most powerful howl that I've ever heard in my life, times five. I've, I've been close to lions and heard them roar in person. Bears, cats, um, moose, uh, elk, um, but these things, they can roar. And the Bible talks about it. The Bible talks about uh, the, the howling that goes on. And the Bible also has, it's, uh, there's a prophecy in there called the burden of Babylon. It talks about when these, and you can just, you can Google it and find it and find out where it's at in the Bible and read the story. But there's a time in the end of days when these people will be called forward to take out the evil ones. It says that they will not care for your gold and your silver, and they will not spare their children. It, the prophecy says basically these creatures and some other supernatural creatures in the end of days will come out of the mountains and destroy the wicked. I didn't make the story up. Go look it up for yourself. It's in there. And uh, so we heard those things roar that night and it just, I knew exactly what it was when I heard it. I said, let me go online and I'm gonna see if I can find that sound somewhere else. And I did. It had been recorded that same, very, very, very similar. It has been recorded in numerous states and up in Canada in different places around the world. And uh, it, was, it was confirmation for me. Well, another night, I was sitting on the front porch and something was coming up and it would smack my house at nighttime. And I was like, it would be like, bam, around the side of the house. And I'd go running outside. I was getting good at it, getting fast. I had the baseball bat leaning right by the door. If I'd ever seen one, I bet you I'd have turned around and come back in the house real quick. But I would run out there, and there was never anything ever outside. There was never a tree limb. There was never a, an owl that had run into the house or anything. And one night, I was sitting on the front porch right back here. And I was sitting on the front porch, and something said, <coughs> smack the crap out of the side of the house right beside me, like two foot from me. And I went, OK. I know you're there. What is it you're trying to get my attention for? Is there something you're wanting to tell me or explain to me? Because I can't see, but I know you're there. And I didn't get any more reaction. 
other than there were two or three other nights where me and my girlfriend were sitting on the front porch, right there in that same spot. We were sitting there, and there's a sliding glass door that we had to come in and out, and the, the, the bearings were wore out on the bottom of it, so you had to lift it up and move it. I had to basically be the one to do it, to open it and close it. There were three nights where we were sitting there where one night where she seen it, and then two other nights where I was the only one that seen it. But that door will slide open and close, open all the way, not slam open, but just open like if I had done it, and then open and close and close back. That happened like three times. I don't know if it was them, but they could easily do it. You know, it could have been another apparition of some kind. You know, my girlfriend thinks it her, was her dad. I'm not saying it was them. And it could have been something else with the slapping on the house. But man, they slapped the crap out of it. But I know one thing. That how we heard, I know exactly what that was. So that's a little bit of a story there. I'm going to tell you one more quick story about some angels. And then we're going to get to Elle's story about her experience with the the uh, mountain man that was wearing a fur coat. <laughs> you can interrupt me anytime, Shannon. <laughs> um, you know, listening here. Colors, you can jump in anytime. I, I will out. say us urban jungle folk, right? I say urban jungle because it is a jungle out there. It's just not quite the same. I know it might be a little hard for us to understand because we're surrounded by suburbia or the city and we're not so connected to outdoors like you are on a daily basis. And so I have a lot of interest in that because you know, you guys deal with the wild all the time and including that gentleman who, you know, posted those videos about, you know, all the weird things. I mean, simple men who are out in the woods doing survivalist stuff. They're not out there trying to look for, you know, something supernatural, but it's coming to them, you know, but you can decipher the fact that it is a different creature. It's not like anything you've heard before or seen or understand because, I mean, you're out, you, you're there, you're surrounded by the wild. You understand that. And so for some of us out, you know, here in the, our urban jungles, you know, it, it might be a little hard to believe, but at the same time, I definitely take more credence with what you would say as opposed to like maybe someone like me who I'm like I don't know what the heck this is I'm never really I'm not haven't spent enough time in the woods you know I'm surrounded here in this I mean I'm in the sticks I was down at the beach I ain't at the beach anymore I'm in the sticks and there's just tens and tens of miles of nothing but woods and swamp and rivers in every direction for like 50 miles, really in any direction. You know, we think we take up a lot of space as humans, but we don't. All we do is we run around like ants, all running in the same roads and patterns. And then there's all this other area that's woods that we don't even pay any attention to. You know, they say the world's overpopulated, but actually you can take every human being on the planet and put them in the county that I'm in, standing side by side, and every human being would fit in this one county that, that uh, compared to the whole earth. And the whole this earth that we know of. The eugenicists want you to believe. Yeah, they want you to think that there's too many people. Because there's too many for them to control is what the problem tends to be. And then they, they control you. They, they're affecting all of us. Anyway, so let me tell the story real quick about the church, Shannon, uh, the angels in the church. And then we'll read Elle's story about uh, from her childhood all the way years forward, things that happened to her related to the Sabe, the woods people. Um, so I moved into this place here just a few days ago. And like, it was either the first night or the second night. First or second night? Might have been the first. Um, 
I was sitting there's a little front porch, which y'all guys seen in my video. I was sitting out there, me and my girlfriend, she was out there with me. And um, we're just hanging out, enjoying the nice air, and it's peaceful and everything. And all of a sudden, she says, look, look, look. Because we've had a lot of experiences with angels, especially me, but her too. And you say, angels? What are you talking about, crazy man? This man's talking about Bigfoot and angels. This is the supernatural show. And what we do on here is we tell the truth about supernatural happenings. So this happened the other night. I'm sitting on the porch, and she says, look, look, look. And I look up, and there's this church. It's about not even a quarter mile down the street, but we can see it from the front porch. And she says, look, 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 and I look, and there are angels rising up one after the other coming up above the church like that. They, they're big balls of light. They're bright white and round all about. That's what scripture says they look like. Ezekiel said they look like a wheel within a wheel, which they do look like a wheel within a wheel. I've seen, well, now at this time, I've got to add 12 more angels to my total. So I'm probably up around 125 angels, something like that, that have come to me. You say, well, they're down there at the church. They're not coming to you. Yeah, they did. I'll tell you why. They're coming up above this church, one after the other, rising up, getting real bright, like almost bright as the sun at one point. It was like lighting it up out here. And there was like about six or seven of them that rose up. And then the, I'm like, okay, okay, Daniel, pay attention, slow down, analyze, think about what this means. Because I've had to learn the hard way when you don't pay attention to the supernatural happenings around you and you ignore them, you go, ooh, that's just crazy. When you do that, most some of the times you're being warned or some of the time you're just being communicated with. You have to pay attention. You can't ignore these things. And so what I did was I said, okay, Daniel, slow down. Let's think about this. Okay. Okay, I got angels coming to me again, and they're rising up above a church that's just right down the street, right where I can see it right here. So I said, okay, Father, I prayed. I said, Father, I think you want me to go to that church. See, I don't go to church. I am at church. But I said, Father, if you want me to go to that church for something I need or something that they need, Send the angels back tomorrow night and make them rise above the church again tomorrow night. And the next night, I was sitting on the porch, same time, me and my girlfriend, and here they come again, rising up. Big, beautiful balls of light, just so white and pure. They rose above the church just like I prayed for again. Right above the same exact spot, right in the, right on the top of the church, rising up. And for me, that's enough for me. I know I have to go to that church and see what this is about. Because I'm pretty sure that's confirmation that there's something I need to go do there or there's something for me there. Either way. So, yeah, I'm going to go to church this Sunday. I ain't walked in a church church in probably 20 years because of the same reasons why many of you haven't walked in a church in 20 years. It'll be interesting because let's just say it's going to be interesting. You know, I have an intuition about that that I'll discuss with you later, but it's like been heavy on my heart to talk to you about. And I bet that's the reason that you're, you're seeing. Uh, 
So I just uh, gonna shout that out. I got a little something to I talk. Already know about what you think. <laughs> I already know what you're thinking, Shannon. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. <sighs> Love you, brother. So much. So much. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I'm just going to keep an open mind and see, you know, what happens. But no matter what happens, um, no matter what happens, I'll be, I'm going to be doing this. Maybe one day I'll have a church and we'll be live. Well, we are kind of already on that path, I think. Just saying. Yeah. Church we'll is the body of Christ. Uh, I will do what Father wants me to do. I'm not going to do what people want me to do. Amen. So, with that being said, guys, <laughs> let's try to let's tell Elle's story. And I say Elle because that's how she identified herself as Elle. So, I'm very happy with that. And, of course, y'all guys can submit your own stories at the website as well. Uh, just go to the supernatural dot show and you can tell your story. Let me share the screen and I'll uh, show you where you can submit that real quick. Let's pull that up here. So right here on the website, you just go to submit story right here at the very top. This is the home page. Okay. You don't have to be a member to submit your story. Although I would encourage you to become a member and all you have to do to do that. Just click on this button right here and follow the instructions. Simple as that. But you want to do it that way. Don't just go over here and buy a membership plan because then you won't you won't have set up your account before you bought your membership plan. I'm thinking about taking this button down. The page will still be there, but I'll have to direct them to it through here. I'll leave it there for the moment. Submit your stories here. You also can submit your the Supernatural Show pick or video of the day here. We've got some people doing that. We're going to be showing that in the coming shows. And also you can submit observations to different studies that we're doing right now as well. But let's jump over to our stories. And like I say, it's by L. She submitted it on the website. And there's quite a few of you that have submitted your stories that I haven't gotten to yet. I will. They're all going to be read. All right. So let's see here, Shannon. Let's just uh, let's just start reading, I guess. Let me uh, bring this on down. Okay. So again, it was submitted by L. This is how she identified herself. That might be Lori or whatever. I don't know. But uh, I live in upstate New York which used to be mainly farms. So this experience happened to me when I was five years old. I'm in the middle of five children. And at this time, I believe my mother was pregnant for their fourth child. My older brother, whom I was born three years after, used to play together a lot. I was his younger sister, so we didn't play together constantly. But our favorite and only place to play and explore was the woods right behind our home. It it's where all the kids in this very small roadside community played. This was 1974, and cartoons ended at 9 a.m., and that meant we had to go outside. This particular morning, before my brother and I headed out, our mother stopped us and explained that she saw a homeless man at the top of the hill in the woods. She then proceeded to say, as she cocked her head sideways and quickly squinted her eyes, as if she was having a hard time believing it herself, that the man was wearing a fur coat. She said she couldn't understand how he could wear a fur coat in the middle of summer because the heat gets up into the 90s. She said he was going to die from a heat stroke 
dressed like that. Then, not long after, I was playing in my room near the doorway with a Barbie doll. The whole house was quiet. I didn't hear my mom in the kitchen or TV. I would always stop what I was doing as a kid if I didn't hear my mom because I didn't want to feel alone in the home and would listen for a minute or two for some noise. Then I would continue. I don't believe I heard her at all, which made me a little bit more aware because everything felt off. I continued to play with the doll again. Then all of a sudden, I heard a garbled noise. I paused, wondered about it, then played again. Then, most certainly as I am sitting here typing, I heard a deep, deep male voice speak to me. I remember glancing around, wondering where the man was, and he spoke again. He said, hello, for the second time. And I asked, who is this? Out loud and right after I said it, I realized I didn't have to speak out loud. I don't remember the man saying anything about it. I just remember that I just knew. He then answered, a friend. Within the next few years, I had started a rock collection, only keeping the sparkly rocks. Our front porch had no railings on it. One morning I came outside to play and on the corner of the porch nearest me, after I stepped off was a triangular black flat rock. The base was wider than the other sides. I can remember looking at it, inspecting it by moving it back and forth in the sun to see if it sparkled, and it didn't. So I threw the rock, and then I heard his voice again saying, hey, that wasn't nice. I replied, but it didn't sparkle. I only liked the sparkly rocks. I believe I was around seven or eight years old at the time. The next day when I went outside, I found a beautiful white sparkly rock. I loved it. It was the same exact spot the black rock was the day before. I know I went into the house to show my mother. I believe she asked me where I found it and I told her my friend gave it to me. I loved that rock. I remember feeling, whoops. Hang on. I remember feeling it was special for some reason, maybe because it was a gift. The next incident, when I was about 12, 11 to 12 years old, happened when I was a little deeper in the woods. I was the kind of child that loved nature and everything God made. I inspected everything. This day, I was enthralled with the trees, looking up at them standing at the very bottom of the trees and the bark. Even tried to climb on, but they were a little thin and didn't have low branches to hold on to. So it was like trying to climb a rope. Then all of a sudden, I felt like someone was watching me. I stopped what I was doing, looking all around me, trying to be thorough because I still remember my mother's warning about a homeless man living in the woods. I did not see anything at all. I really wasn't done and decided to work my way back towards the house to be closer in case I had to make a quick getaway. As I walked, each step could be heard for miles because there was so many dry leaves, a carpet. I noticed that each step I took, I heard another footstep at the same place, at the same pace as mine, mimicking my steps. If I stopped, it stopped. When I started again, it started again. I thought to myself, well, the sound is coming from my left, 
took a few more steps so I could then gauge how far away the sounds were. I repeated this process a couple of times to hone in on the place the person was from, from my person. I could tell the sounds of the footsteps were not very far away, about 20 to 30 feet. And I could just, I, I just could not understand why I couldn't see them. I knew for a fact that it was not far from me and should not have any problem seeing them, but I couldn't. My next thought, only as a child things, I thought it would be funny to trip them up Sorry, lost my spot there. Trip them up by walking. Then suddenly do one skip step to see if I could trick the person. I guess I was also trying to make sure I was hearing what I was hearing. So I started walking again and I heard the footfalls again. Then I did a skip step, then back to normal. Well, it worked. I stopped walking and yelled out loud, ha ha, I fooled you. For a split second, I was happy with myself for being able to trick them because I heard a single footfall when I skipped the step. Then the realization that I was not alone in the woods and had no one with me just flooded over my entire body. At that moment, I took off for home, scared I was going to be kidnapped or die. Now, I didn't feel anything negative at all. I have always been able to feel things like that and other things someone once told me. I was an empath, but I just don't like labels, kind of like me. When you label something about yourself, it comes with all sorts of attachments, even if it's untrue. It's like you've been marked, good or bad, or good and bad. The final incident with whatever it was when I was 16 years old. Not the greatest family life, but not the worst either. It was a very, very frustrating atmosphere and being a teenager made it worse. Well, one evening, just at twilight, I had been arguing with my mother about something, probably my older sister, because she was always down my throat. At this point in my life, I was wore out over my sister's tendency to criticize me and control me through my mother. I didn't need to be controlled. I was a good kid. So anyways, I had walked out the front door into the yard to get away. I could hear my mother saying stuff about me being critical of my sister because I wasn't allowed to say anything negative about my, sis my older sister, even if it was true. I was just supposed to take her gruff and let it go. I yelled back loud so she could hear me, and I cussed when I said what I said. And then the next thing I hear is, I don't like that kind of talk, and I'm not going to talk to you anymore. I think he also said, he was leaving and not coming back. Now this upset me more and I pleaded with him. I said, I'm sorry, I'm just mad right now. Please don't leave and received no answer. And so I said, fine, I don't care. This, is, this last bit lasted about 15 seconds. I never understood why I felt that way towards some, someone or thing I never even met and didn't even know what it was. It's funny how children can just accept strangeness like that and not really question it. L. Wow, mm -hmm. that was wow. amazing. You know, interestingly enough, when I mentioned about the kids and, and the, you know, who had been taken and you know, taken under the wing under these creatures and they talk about it. It's, I had no idea that the story was based off of this uh, 
person's childhood and it's just the parallels sometimes you know that was, that was pretty awesome yeah that was really awesome story thank you l for submitting that story it's interesting because now i'm back in this location and see the reason why children will allow themselves to do these things is because they're not broken yet. They haven't been sent to get educated. So they are more open to things that we will just call crazy and run off. Even though she got scared at one point and ran, she still allowed herself to hear these things and recognize them where some of us would uh, shut it down in our mind and, and not tell no one. And these kind of things happen to so many people when they don't tell the stories, they don't tell the truth. And I believe you, well, I know this happened to you because I've had similar things happen to me. I see angels and hear Bigfoot, you know, and I just tell the truth when I tell these stories that happen to me, like the angels seeing them from the porch or from the water's edge at the beach or on the mountaintops in New Mexico. There's nothing wrong with telling the truth. Stop basing your life or your version of the truth off of what other people think. You need to live your own life and live in the truth and walk in the truth and be damned anyone who wants to keep you from knowing what the truth is. That's what this show is about, is allowing people to tell the truth. I just have to say too, she is right there in my, alongside my heart because I've been a collector of rocks since I was a little girl too. And my favorite were the sparkly ones. That, well, that was like, oh, another one. I believe, I believe these people are the masters of nature. You know, we're masters of this world in our own ways. But these Sabe, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Woods people, whatever you want to call them, they, they are as comfortable sitting on a log in the woods as you are sitting on your couch. Reminds me of the story of Esau, where Jacob was a tent man. He liked to live in the tents in the valley. And Esau, he liked, he was a hairy man and liked to live in the mountains, in the woods, and chase deer and eat venison. It reminds me of that because, I mean, we're, we're not, we're really good at treading the earth down, but we're not masters of the, of the earth, of the wild. But these beings appear like they are. And you mentioned about the, some of the kids and people going missing. I think it also has something to do with these beings or some of the places that these beings go and come from. Like some kind of supernatural portals that that are out there. And if you happen to wander through one and, and don't turn around and leave immediately, you're gonna end up in another world. W-H-I-R-L-E-D, another world. Not in this world anymore. And I think that's where some of these people might go. I'm not saying that is for sure all of it, but I think it's very possible now knowing the things that I understand about our world that I've done a lot of talking about and a lot of videos about that, that these things exist and that these other dimensional worlds exist, just like the word veil, beyond the veil, the renting of the veil, that's, that's a word for dimension, dimensional separation. It reminds me of the movie um, Donnie Darko, where he's in there tapping on the, with the knife, tapping on an invisible wall. Bam, bam. What he's doing, because the rabbit's on the other side of the dimension, 
and he's tapping on dimensional separation. He's tapping on the veil is what that movie is showing you. But he's able, due to some psychotic medications that he's taken, it's allowing him to see across the veil and see some of this stuff. And uh, thank God and Father in Heaven that he allows me to see across sometimes when the angels come to me. And maybe, maybe just maybe I'll have an experience out here where I'm at now. Whoops, my computer's acting up just a little bit. Come on back, Mr. Computer. Oh, there you go. Okay. Maybe I'll have an experience that, uh, you know, I don't want to get the death scared out of me because I think these, you really got to get your head wrapped around of having faith and having no fear in order to be able to deal with seeing these creatures, these people in person because they're covered hair to toe with 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 fur or hair not fur excuse me not fur hair well you know they definitely have a super gift and can hear your thoughts some you know it appears so yes it appears so they they're on a different dimensional plane in a sense Mm -hmm. So where what we block ourselves off with our tunnel vision, they don't have that boundary. One of the first stories we ever told on here was a guy that wrote in and he, his name was Dakota. And he wrote in and he said that, mm -hmm. that he ran across one in the woods one time. And the, the Sabe was able to sway the trees with his hand without touching them. And he tried to explain to Dakota that we have the ability to do this. We just have to have belief. Kind of reminds me of the Bible saying that we can move mountains with belief. The Holy Spirit will indwell and give you miracles. And I've, I've told you guys some things that I've learned about the hands. The hands are one of the most unique God-given things that we have. And I'm not going to get into the subject because I've already talked enough crazy supernatural stuff today. But mm -hmm. the hands are an extremely powerful gift from God, but we have to have belief and faith. And uh, I'll maybe one day we'll try to demonstrate a few things for you. But, uh, wow, what an awesome, I mean, really awesome story you know, and true. Last week, uh, or the last show we did was the dragon, you know, where she got to peek across the veil and see the dragon in another dimension, I think, due to the refraction of the light in the ice crystals up, up at the top of the mountain. It's like there's so many layers of worlds all here existing in the same place. And only sometimes, only sometimes, do we get to see beyond the veil? Speaking of beyond the veil, feel free to be a, become a member over on the website as well to the beyond the veil. Right now, I like I you guys know, or I'm sure there's some new people here, but you can sign up to become a member of the website, and there's a bunch of reasons why you want to. You have built you a little home here where y'all guys can all like-minded individuals can come into one place and not be censored. And right now what we're doing also, instead of $3.99 a month, I've set it up so use that coupon code at the very end there that says 75% off three months, 652. That's a coupon code for 75% off of the first three months. And yeah, I have to try to make a living somehow. And, you know, we all live in this world where there's this thing called money controlling all of us. And so I, I wish that I didn't have to ask for anything, but I need to try to do it somehow. I can't always depend on y'all guys to just, I'm worried that one day I'll go to that well and it'll be empty. And uh, so I apologize for having to charge anything for any of my work. I really don't like doing that, but this $3.99 a month is like nothing. And with this coupon code, it's only a dollar for the first three months, you get to see if you like what's going on there. 
And I'm actually going to start doing all my research and all my work. I'm going to be on the website doing it. I'm going to be posting the links to everything that I'm doing as I'm doing it. I'm going to incorporate the website into my fun function as well as it in the beyond the veil area that's an area where there's a lot of things that go on research meetings that me and shannon have with other people um where you can go and see behind the scenes of everything that we're doing so that's the beyond the veil part that's outside of the structure of this show and my logic before authority channel so i hope y'all guys will support it and come on over and be a member and get on there and use it don't just become a member and look at it like a tip Get involved. Be part of my research team. Where do you think all this comes from? It comes from y'all guys. Because the website literally is the people's website, and this is the people's show. So please, be involved. Why don't you? And so we and can all learn the truth here. And just to mention, too, we do have um, a section in our website where there's the prayer and assistance uh, section and you know don't worry if you don't have money if you don't have things not only are, are there are others in our community who can help each other but prayers mean everything and they are so powerful and I just want to thank all of you for all of your prayers your support the love that you've shown and really just helping to support each other in the community you know there's going to be some day here soon where we can't buy or sell without a, a certain mark and it's good to get on board of just helping each other out and being there for each other without the system and i just wanted to throw that out there for you guys yep as a matter of fact part of the website is the people's market where everybody's going to be able to barter and trade with each other and and do that. I'm going to go on the website right now. I'm actually on it as we're talking. And that group, the prayer group, along with a couple of other ones, I'm going to make them public so that that way, even if you don't have the money to get onto some of these pages, I'm going to make them public, public, so that no matter what, if you need prayers, you know, and you, you want to, you need somebody to be there for you and, and people as members on the website can talk with you through that group. I'm going to make it uh, completely public so that that way, you know, just certain areas of the website, I think does not need to be veiled and behind a paywall. So I'm going to make a few little changes with that. Just so you guys know, but uh, there's a lot of content and that we, need a paywall in between us and public because of censorship because google comes around and they look and see what all is public and if you are do, telling too much good truth they'll figure out ways to mess with you and uh and not only that you know it helps support shannon's and my efforts here and uh, really legitimately I've, I've done this for 12 years and i did it for five years and never made a dime and it almost killed me i was homeless the whole time I seem to have a thing about going homeless lately it seems like but luckily i just spent six months in a hotel shannon and never had to sleep in the in the, in the woods or anything because the, my the supporters of this show and of logic before authority they made sure I didn't have to, and um, wow. And now I've got a place that um, it's just not gonna be very expensive at all to be here. And so I'm, I'm so grateful you all got to see me through the storm because I was in a storm. One day I'm gonna tell you the whole story and it's gonna be like, holy smokes, how is he still alive? Only by the grace of God. I tell you, Daniel, there are days that I am very thankful to just be uh, able to, again, share 
how, you know, the, our experiences and all these things and have the chance to be humble in front of everyone and express that I am not perfect. I am not, um, I, I've been a liar. I've been a thief. I've been sexually immoral. I've done all of these things, but by the grace of God, I am still here and I am able to go in front of him naked and unafraid. And I pray that all of us can do that. And there are days that I tell you, I want to go out in sackcloth and ash and tell everyone repent because the end draweth nigh. But then I will probably embarrass the heck out of my children. So I won't do that. But just know that's in my heart, guys. Right now I'm in sackcloth and ash begging us all to repent and call to Jesus and say, hey, face the truth. I am, I am I am what I am. I've done what I've done, but thank you for saving me. And I just can't wait to go home, guys. Sorry. Again, I, I mentioned I was a little shaken and emotional today. So <laughs> I just <laughs> can't can't wait. There's kind of another word for repent. Not that there's anything wrong with repent, but what it comes down to is facing the truth, inwardly and outwardly, to face the truth. And that's what we do here on this show is facing the truth about different subject matter and investigating it and trying to learn as a group together, you know, and face the truth. And that's what repentance is about, too, is facing the truth. Like and saying, I'm sorry and turning away. Yeah. And say, I am so sorry I did those things. I'm not going to continue to do those things. I'm trying to get better. I know I'm still a sinner because I am. Everybody is. There's no one perfect walking in this world. If they are, someone please point them out. Right. I don't believe they exist. I believe we're all sinners. And it's very, very, very difficult to come out of it all, you know, but we need to keep trying and we need to make an effort and face the truth, which repent and ask for forgiveness. It's not a difficult thing. You might feel silly, but keep saying it until it doesn't feel silly anymore because God will show himself to you. Maybe not himself exactly, but trust me, Father sends angels to rise up and down over a church the first night I'm here, second night even maybe, and the next night right behind it. He's shown himself to me symbolically in many ways for so many, my whole life. I've been saved and pulled out of car wrecks and thrown, put back on the road. No, you're not dying. They get going, going on. All kinds of crazy things I've told many of you guys about. What, Shannon? I guess we've kept these guys here for over an hour. What should we do now? Okay. Maybe we should look at the comments for a minute. Let's look at the comments for a minute see what's going on in here. Everybody being nice so I don't have to get anybody in trouble. Hey, Tracy. Good to see you here, ma'am. I appreciate all your work and help on the website. Keep it going. You're on the research team. There's Liar Identifier. He is here. Yeah. But really, we need to be that humble to be willing to repent every day because we know we ain't not walking right yet. Amen. I know I ain't. I I'm, mean, trying to, I'm trying to recognize it all. Hey, Lacey's back. Yeah, I'm still I'm being delivered from habits and things. Mm -hmm. It's a journey, guys. Yeah. Lacey, how's the house doing, darling? Yeah. How is the? How's your place? And Lacey came on here. She was the reason I created the prayer group. She made me think of it. Duh, I need a prayer group. And I created it. And we prayed with her on the show that day. And it was, she was in a wheelchair and was homeless in an electric wheelchair and was having to charge it up at gas stations and stuff, sleeping at night outside in her wheelchair, from what I understand. And we prayed and prayed to God to help her get into a home and get her on a better path. And Father delivered. 30 days, within like 30 days, 30, 45 days. Wasn't it, Shannon? Yeah, I was. Praise Jesus. 
Amazing. Yeah, awesome. Was, you know, like I said, the power of prayer is just beyond words. And um, don't be afraid to pray and to call out, guys, because that's sometimes exactly how we humble ourselves. Well, thank you, Jackie. Jackie says, hello from the UK. So glad you guys have a, a real nice home to call your own you. where you can relax and enjoy being calm and peaceful. Absolutely. Thank yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for your kindness. Lacey said, she came back, said, everything here is great. All praises to the most high. Absolutely. God is good. He's just waiting on you to talk to him. He's waiting on you to recognize him and realize that you're his child. You can talk to him just like I'm talking to you right now, like this. Father, I know you're there, and I know that you know that we're doing this show today. And I know that you know everything that everything is going on in the entire world that we live in. Because we are in your eye. I know that you love everyone, and I know you don't want people to suffer, but I also know that people will make themselves suffer sometimes, Father, because they fall into the wrong ways, into the, you know, the, the wrong crowd, maybe. But I know that you want them to come home, Father, and recognize you as real and have just a little bit of mustard faith, just a tiny bit, and you'll show yourself. And I thank you for that, Father, because there's a lot of people out there that are, that are needing that. And I hope that they hear my voice today and realize it's that simple. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Because it is that simple. You know, it's it's just uh, it's a beautiful thing once you realize it's real. It's a beautiful thing. You know, I just have to say, Daniel, and to all our viewers, I had a real rough morning. And, uh, this is exactly what I needed. So just hearing all of this, being a part of this, it uh, gave me some peace a little bit. So uh, I hope that it brings all of you guys peace too. Yeah. We're being put through these trials. Father has to refine us. You have to be put through trials in order to learn. You got to get your hand burned on the burner to realize not to touch the burner. There's rules as to how we should operate and work in this world. And we all have to learn sometimes the hard way because we're a rebellious group. And we have to, we have to learn the hard way. And when you have these hard things going on in your life, don't curse God for it. Because you need to thank God for it because he's trying to teach you something. Be thankful he is refining you because that means yes. he loves you. How do you get a sword or a knife sharp? You gotta you gotta you gotta work it over. How do you get the wheat separated from the chaff? You gotta beat it. Why do you think your mom and your daddy had to spank your butt when you were a child? They wanted you to do good so they would hurt you. Our Father in Heaven has to sometimes allow us to hurt ourselves so we can learn the proper way to live our lives, to control and run our houses, not just the house we're in, but the in house inside of us. We have to learn how to run our temple. We have to carry a rod of iron and know the right way, and pray for the knowledge of the right way, and then you run yourself, boom, if you have to. And then you run the things around you if you have to. And then you run the world that you exist within. Our Father's trying to teach us this. And I'm here just to give you a couple of little words and hopefully lead you in the right direction. Because our Father is not against us. He's for us. But we have to listen. Listen to Daddy. Listen to Father. Talk to him and ask him for his help. And stop putting yourself in the way of your own, <laughs> your own <laughs> healing. Sometimes we're our own worst enemy, <laughs> you know. 
Um, Shannon, can uh, can you kind of start wrapping the show up? I'll be back in just a second, okay? Oh, you got it. Yeah, just uh, check the comments and stuff, and I'll be right back. Well, you know, I believe that this is a, a good right here, if I can get it. This is a good comment to kind of leave off on this. But, you know, praise Jesus that we are being refined and praise Jesus that we all get a chance to have these supernatural experiences to share and to show that God is supernatural and is the creator of all. And I just love you guys. I hope you're having a wonderful, blessed day. If you are having a hard time, uh, please don't forget we do have that prayer and assistance page. Uh, we would all love to be there to pray for you. Um, our friend Scott, he also has a wonderful um, channel where he does prayer uh, sessions just about every day as long as he's feeling up to it. And they're wonderful. He, he sings some, you know, gospel stuff and it, it takes on prayer requests and reads Bible passages and it, it's a great channel. And then also our friend Dan, he's building up his channel a bit here too, but he's a great prayer warrior out there trying to, to More than against and bind evil things, you know, go check them out. Come to our website, be a part of our community if you aren't already. And we love you guys. And I just want to, you right. You're not alone. No, <laughs> I mean, no, I would, no. I'd sing it right now, but I know I have a recording <laughs> there somewhere. But actually, I suppose I think I got it here somewhere, right? You might. I don't know. We'll get it lined up so we can uh, wait a minute. I might have it right here. Yeah, the the song that Shannon did. Let me let me pull it. We'll listen to it on the way out today. All right. Uh, here we go. Is it okay, Shannon? Sure. All right. Again, it's a work in progress, but <laughs> let's, uh, let's mute let's mute our mics, Shannon, for a second. Okay. It's so much fun singing to yourself. Wow. Yeah, it worked out good though because we had, the, we had your track going there and, and you could uh, lip, lip sync with it. So, yeah, Shannon created that for our show and for the website as a message. And she's going to do a longer version later as well mm -hmm. uh, with some additional yeah. verses in it. But uh, what a beautiful job and what a beautiful way to end the show. And hey guys, come back next time to find out what in the supernatural is going on. <laughs> yes, please do. And if I keep pushing the wrong buttons here, <laughs> we're going to end the show. <laughs> okay, there we go. I got myself a little sideways. Now I got it. But thank you guys. We appreciate you taking your time out of your day and joining in on learning about the truth of the supernatural of God's world, of the world, W-H-I-R-L-E-D, that we live in, 
And we'll be back again. Uh, we may even do a show again tomorrow because we got a little behind. So we're going to be trying to catch back up with our pace here. And Shannon is also, oh, Shannon, tell us what you're going to do on Saturday. Oh, I'm going to do a live show. Um, we had a guest on here several months back, my friend Ray, who um, has been working in the uh, working against child trafficking for many, many years. And he's been working with this place called the Tudor House up in Lake Arrowhead that God really gave him some visions on. And he's been kind of like this protector of this space. So there's a place for more people to come when, you know, they need God and love. But he's been, you know, spiritually battling a lot of the evilness that has been placed there for quite some time so i'm gonna go and we're gonna do a little tour and he's gonna talk about his experiences here at the tudor house and how he has done a lot of spiritual warfare in the name of jesus and all the beautiful miracles including angels that have come at that space so stay tuned saturday i'm not sure exactly what time but we'll We'll post that when we can, and yeah, come join us to hear some cool supernatural stories. Yeah, little uh, on site supernatural, yeah. show. and uh, I may be there with her uh, on the show. Uh, we'll see. I might sit back and just watch and let Shannon run it one time. So, but uh, either way, um, we may see you guys again tomorrow. Uh, we've got plenty to do, that's for sure. So. But for now, until next time, I love you. Shannon loves you. Our Father in Heaven loves you. And just reach out and speak to him. Make a little effort. He won't let you down.